<sighs> What's up, guys? Uh, I've made this video twice already and deleted it. And then also, uh, I started it two more times and deleted those because I kind of went on these like crazy tirades about uh, he's got that dog in him man. Talking about how, you know, sparring partners and stuff. I get on these, like, crazy tangents, but um, <laughs> and I, I'm trying to get away from it. I apologize, so I'll cut mine short here. Uh, we're going to be looking at Sergey Lipinets. Um, I've been wanting to do a video on him for a while. He's a 140-pound uh, title challenger. He's going to be fighting for the, I think it's the IBF this weekend. Uh, so I figured if I'm going to do a fucking video on this guy, I'm going to do it now. Um... Yeah, and he's a really interesting fighter, you guys. He had over 500 kickboxing matches, right? So he's not green, you know. Um, there's still a lot of boxing, and there's, like, kickboxing is so much more dynamic than boxing. Um, and that's one of the reasons why a lot of the skills, the highest-level skills in boxing don't exactly transfer in the way that you would think that they could in kickboxing is because, oh, now you just, you know, oh, you just got kneed in the face, you know, or you got kicked in the head, you know. Um, because you are using this really high-level boxing technique. So it'll be really interesting to see what kind of stuff he brings to the ring and, and does not, you know, because of these, because of the subtle differences in the sport. Whoops. So let's go ahead and get into it. So immediately, I love this from him. Got to give him props. Comes out, faints him right away. And what does, he know, what does his opponent do? He takes a step back, right? He's like, oh, he's coming forward already. And then he gives him a different look, you know. Whoops. So feints him, then dips to his right, dips to his left, feints him again, high guard, and then steps off the line. Uh, and then for some reason, whoever made this video, uh, they, they change cameras or they change lenses or whatever in the middle of it. I don't know what the deal is with that. Again, fainting, fainting again, fainting. And what is he noticing about these feints, right? His opponent is not looking to counter them, right? There he goes to catch the jab, right? But he's not looking to counter the jabs, right? Anyway, uh, and then the first punch actually thrown is from his opponent, which he parries, right? And then he goes to parry another shot and then dips his head to the right to get away from a right hand. But look at how he instinctively thinks the right hand is coming and boom, it's another jab. Really interesting, right? Um... I think he's reading a right hand and seeing, and you know, the jab winds up coming. It doesn't land, doesn't, which is not the point, but it's the fact that he, in his mind, the right hand is already coming. Um, and that might be an interesting way for um, Leonardo to Leo or Zappa. I'm going to call him Zappa throughout the thing. I'm gonna, maybe I'll call him Leo. Who knows? Whatever. Um, but that might be an interesting trap that he might be able to walk Lipinets into, right? Is fainting a right hand, getting to dip away from it, and then throwing a left hook, you know? Um, and now, interesting, gets him into the corner, right? Not in the corner, right? But as he's cutting the ring off, there's this little space right here, right? Where Zappa is already on the line, right? And Sergei Lipinets, if he moves any more over to his, his left, he's going to approach and land on the line right into uh, Zappa's uh, wheelhouse of power, um, and then he's going to instantly be in a defensive position. So what does he do? Instead of taking that spot right? He, he starts turning and moving away the other direction so as not to have the ring cut off on him because Zappa has already cut it off. Now again, shoots the jab and then immediately Leo uh, um, Lipinets ducks down to his right to get away from the right hand again, right? Showing a pattern, showing like, I don't want to say like Philly Shell style defense, right? Because he's not looking exactly to catch and counter in that, in that respect. Um, not really slipping punches to, to counter, but just moving away so far. Uh, but I do like his feints, you know. In spite of the fact that he's not throwing any punches, I like his feints. And again, moving to his own right, walking to his right, sees the right hand coming, right? But it's a right hand to the body. Um, but because of the fact that he's moving to his right, he gets away from it. Now, this is really interesting. I want to point this out because it does kind of affect the film study a lot uh, in the timing. Um, if you watch, watch uh, Zappa... Whoops, motherfucker. So watch Zappa as he, he ducks down right here. He hops forward, and then when he puts his weight on his left leg, he hops forward again, right? And then that's the tell for his punching, right? That's one of the flaws that he has right here. And he kind of gives it away, and uh, as you can see, Lipinets is, is catching the lead hand right here, and then dipping away from the right hand, pulling away from it, right? 
uh, because he knows that he thinks that that's what's coming next, just like in the last, the previous two situations. But um, Zappa kind of has a tell for his punches. And here, boom, Zappa eating a jab because of the fact that it's it's becoming easy for for uh, uh, Lipinets to time him because he kind of shuffles before he shoots his first punch. So I'll try not to harp on that too much. Um, now this is interesting too, right? So Lipinets moving to his right, shoots the jab, and what does his opponent do, right? He takes a step back, right? So it's interesting. So there are a few things that you can kind of infer from that, right? So what have we seen Lipinets do when the jab comes at him, right? He instinctively ducks away from the right hand, right? And now maybe this is uh, his opponent's way of getting away from the right hand as well. So instead of trying to counter the jab and take Lipinets' jab away by countering over the top or throwing a left hook at the same time or whatever, punching with him, um, he's really worried about the right hand uh, and he's showing that respect by moving away from him when he jabs. Um, and also showing that respect by not actually trying to take his jab away and getting baited, baited um, which actually goes, goes back to this right here, when he flashes the lead hand and then throws the right hand, right? So not wanting to get caught with a very similar style trap, right? And walk into a right hand of his own. So, oops, did I go too far? Just barely, but anyway. And one thing that I really like about that, now, one interesting thing is, uh, Zappa is not doing any fainting, right? Notice when he comes in, he comes in really honestly, but look at how Lipinets is fainting him, right? Fainting him. Giving, giving him like subtle little head movements, right? Moving his head a little bit to the left, right? That might open up a right hand, right? If he just leans into it a little bit, right? And making Zappa think, you know, not allowing Zappa exactly to control that space, right? But the, if you notice also, the only way that, that um, Lipinets is controlling the space between them is with these feints, right? Look at the long stretch of inactivity from Zappa. Let's see. How far back does it go? So starting from here, 30 seconds, 230, 226, right? Fainting, shooting a jab, fainting, fainting again. 10 seconds and Zappa hasn't done anything right? Which maybe not that, that um, unusual or that striking, right? But if you're only throwing a one-two every, you know, 15 seconds or so, your, your output for the round is going to be really low. What would that be? Uh, four, eight, 12? 12 combinations per round, right? And that's not a very high output. Uh, 12, that'd be 24 punches per 24 punches per round, right? So keeping someone inactive for that amount of time simply by controlling the distance, by stopping them from feeling comfortable entering it with your feints is, is, a, is, is definitely an accomplishment. But uh, because of the fact that he's not actually controlling that space with his lead hand, it allows Zappa to kind of feint him. And again, right, feints him. And after the feint, sorry, feints him. He thinks the right hand is coming, so he's moving away from the right hand, but Zappa's picked up on it and is able to get him out of position, right? He does almost walk him into this left hand and then misses the right hand as well as the left hand, um, but look at how easy it is for him to get Lipinets out of position. Even though he doesn't land anything, that's not really the point. And then again, the same kind of tell, right, from Zappa, right? And he walks into a jab right there, and Lipinets is able to walk out of there. But, you know, so far, Lipinets not really controlling the distance very well, not using his lead hand, probing, right? He's giving him very good feints, right? He's not allowing Zappa to know when he's going to be coming in. And he's always testing Zappa to see if the counters are coming before he, uh, before he commits to a shot. Much like in this situation right here, right? Feints him, and then his opponent brings his hands up. When the feint comes, so he jabs to the body and then comes back out. Now, one thing I want to point out about that, after he jabs him and shoots that jab to the body, he doesn't smother him. He doesn't control him with his lead hand. He doesn't shoot that jab and then, while his arm is out there, fold his arm onto his opponent and then body up with him with his forearm to control him, right? He just takes a step back, straight back, 
right? And then Zappa, oh, and now Zappa is looking to catch him with his shots on his way out. So he's starting to follow uh, Lipinets out. Uh, and that's because of the fact that he's not controlling him. And again, shuffling again, right? This time he doesn't dip down, but he shuffles and eats a jab. Uh, and then after the jab, he knows that no right hand is coming. So he decides to follow Lipinets out and uh, land a body shot. Whoops, I missed that one. Another, now, Lipinets. Oh, that's interesting. So Lipinets moving to his left now, right? And then almost eats a body shot because he's moving into the right hand this time and says, oh, you know what? Fuck that shit. Back to moving to my right. And again, this is one of the problems with not using your lead hand to control your opponent. Not constantly fainting, not, not probing, not, you know controlling the space between them it it doesn't matter how much space you're not maintaining distance from your opponent you never want to maintain distance because now you can't land punches and your opponent can't land punches but because of the fact that he's not controlling him he's using only feints to do it and not making his opponent work around his lead hand his opponent's able to use this probe right here right and then another probe and then faint the right hand by slipping to the inside and make giving him the right hand motion and gets him completely out of position, right? Then he throws that left probe, and then a left hand upstairs, which could have landed, controls him to keep him upright, lands a great body shot right there, and then he rolls with the other shot. But all of that could have been avoided simply if he was controlling the distance um, and controlling the space between them uh, by using his lead hand. And... The reason that it's important especially is because we can see that Lipinets is not looking to counter at all, right? Because of the fact that he's not looking to counter Zappa at all, there's no reason for him to allow Zappa to get punches off like this, especially so easily, by not controlling the distance. Ooh, what was that? Oh, man, beautiful. So now Zappa comes in with that very predictable rhythm, right? And he throws a left hook instead. And, whoops, throws a left hook instead. And I can't see if it lands, but Lipinets looks to counter with the jab, right? Just like he had been doing. And it does look like that left hook might land, but he gets Lipinets to throw that jab and then tries to counter over the top of that jab with the right hand. Now, why did I say beautiful, right? It looks like he kind of gets clocked right here with that left hook. This is exactly the same thing that happened to Erickson Lubin, right? He showed a defensive posture or a defensive move early in the fight, um, and then Charlo was able to walk him into the same shot. Now, the interesting thing here is Zappa is able to do the exact same thing. He forces uh, Lipinets to throw his jab out by giving him the same motion that he's been giving him, and then throws the right hand over the top, walking him into the shot, but because of the fact that Lipinets has been looking for the right hand the whole fight, right? Remember, every time um, Zappa throws a jab, Lipinets kind of rolls away from the right hand, so he's kind of ready for it, you know? And this is the difference between a fighter like Lubin, who's like I was calling green, and a very and a much more experienced fighter, you know? Uh, Lipinets is, like I said, I'm not sure if I said it in this video, but I said it in, in at least one of the videos I deleted. Um, he had over 500 uh, amateur kickboxing matches, you know, so he's very experienced in combat. He has good eyes, you know, he's not, he's might be green for boxing and, and all the strategies that, that are employed here, but, you know, we'll see. Again, a beautiful, fainting again, fainting again, uh, all looking at, at getting a look at what his opponent's going to bring to him when he starts using his, his jab, when he starts shooting the jab. And what does he see? He sees that when he faints, that Zappa brings his guard up. So he feints him again and then shoots the jab to the body. And again, like the last time, Zappa's looking to follow him with that with a punch outside. Follow him back because because uh, Lipinets is not looking to land his right hand. And again, shooting it, getting away from the right hand, taking a step back. Ooh, now that's interesting, right? 
So he shoots the jab this time, and there was no feint, right? Gives him like a little look to his left, right? Leans over, and then explodes out of his guard, shoots the jab, and moves off the line. But um, Zappa, now I'm not sure what's, like, what does it look like Zappa's doing from this position, right? Like, why would he want to go into that position off of getting hit with a, a jab, you know? You, you get hit with a jab, and then you slip to the outside, or you slip to the inside. You know, that was like the first thing that, um, that my boxing coach, man, he was such a dick, dude. Uh, I get in the ring, and I remember I had seen it. I don't remember who showed it to me, but slipping the jab to the inside. Um, but, um, but my coach, uh, he gets in the ring with me. It's like one of my first sparring sessions ever, and my coach is sparring with me. He's like, I'm like 5'7", right? And my coach was like 6'2". Uh, and I'm sorry if this is breaking the rhythm of the boxing match but um, or the breakdown, but I get in the ring and my coach starts throwing little jabs at me, right? And I'm like, you know, obviously I'm just eating them. I've never sparred before. He's way sharper and quicker than I'm anticipating. And he, I finally get his timing and I slip to the inside, right? But I don't, I don't know how to punch off of it. You know, he's got so much reach on me. I don't know what the fuck's going on. But I'm just trying to find a rhythm to where I can see him and I can... I can figure out what I can do from there. And then the very next time I slip to the inside, he fucking punches me in the face with the right hand. And, like, I don't black out or nothing, but it just caught me so by su by surprise. Um, I think I cussed at him, man. I was really pissed about it, to be honest. Like, because we're supposed to be going light, too. Um, but, yeah, he just fucking cracks me in the face. And uh, it reminds me of that, right? So, like, I know that we've seen Lip and Yet's not throw very many right hands, but if he lands the jab and then you slip into the right hand, right? What if Lipinets had thrown it right there? He could have just knocked this guy straight out. I don't know. Interesting. But um, anyway, the very next jab, he pulls back and then looks to follow Lipinets out again. And it looks like it looks like he tries to catch him, like rolling with the shot, and then try to catch him with the left hook right there. Uh, really interesting. And again, Lipinets getting himself out of position, uh, not countering, not controlling the distance between them. You know, I really don't like that. You know, I don't remember how many knockouts Zappa has, but the guy, he's described as a brawler, you know, and I assume that he has quite a few. Now, this is good, right? So, as soon as, as, soon as Zappa starts pressing forward, he starts probing and, and, uh... Uh, Lipinets ducks a probe, right? He like kind of ducks down and then starts fainting him during the during the probes that Zappa's getting off, and it kind of for a moment s stops Zappa from initiating his his offense because now um, Lipinets in this in this manner is attempting to control the distance between them, right? So. Zappa is saying, hey, I need this space to set my punches up. I need to make you think I'm throwing a jab so you get out of the way of the jab and I can throw a right hand left hook. And Lipinets is like, oh, well, while you want to do that, I'm going to faint you. I'm going to throw a jab. No, I'm just kidding. I'm going to throw. I'm going to throw a jab, right? But, um, you know, Zappa kind of reads it, I guess, and he's like, oh, he's not going to do nothing and presses forward. And look at how easy it is with these feints to get... Uh, Lipinets out of position. So feints him, feints him, feints him with the right hand, and Lipinets does the right thing, right? Look at how he does the right thing. He gets his right hand up over his chin, right? So he can block the right hand, right? But now he's out of position and he has to get away from the left hook, right? Which he does very well. And then the right hand is not really a punch, you know, and that's the first kind of punch. And while he's rolling with these shots, right? Not that, that left hook right there. He gets away from them. He shouldn't be allowing Zappa to kind of throw these punches because whether you have decent defense or not, you don't want your to be reacting to your opponent because when you're reacting to your opponent, that's when they can say, hey, look over there, right? And then punch you with the other hand, right? You know, very simple probes, very simple, um, very simple tricks, right? Very simple feints. Um, and, you know, even though I was trying to get away from the Loma Rigo, t Rigo talk, 
Rigando does the same thing. You know, his, he, he thinks his opponents are always being very honest with him um, in the way that he kind of slips and rolls punches. And I think that that's why Lomachenko is going to have so much success um, is because of this very reason, right? Now, granted, neither one of these fighters is Lomo or Rigo, but these, these types of engagements, they're still the... Uh, they still are what what determine the outcome of a fight, right? Or the outcome of a micro-engagement, as I call them. Um, but anyway, moving on. Damn it, 20 minutes. I, I meant to do another round. I, I think I'll still do another round. Maybe I'll make this a long, a long one, and I'll do like three rounds or something. But again, fainting. I love all the feints. And again, he faints every single time before he throws a punch, right? Every single time, he always wants to make sure Zappa has not made an adjustment and is looking to counter him. Oh my god, beautiful. So real quick, feints him, shoots the jab, and then Zappa follows it up and chases him with the shot, right? And then, now, I think that's the fourth or fifth time that he's done that. He's tried to chase Lipinets. So now, Lipinets comes in with the jab. Zappa is ready for it. And what does he do? He slips to his left, and it's the very same motion if you're making a right hand, right? And Zappa tries to follow him with the left hook, but because of the fact that Lipinets knew what he was going to do, he's able to walk him into this beautiful left hook, you guys. That is amazing boxing, you guys. Now, for all the shit that I've given him, this is an excellent trap that he's set. An absolutely excellent trap. All... All that he set up off of his jab from the beginning of the round, right? Because his opponent... Now, look, now let's look at this too, right? So he shoots the jab, and what does, what does Zappa do? He slips and gets his left hand up to block a right hand, right? And then comes in with the counter of his own. So he's been ready for the right hand the whole fight, right? He hasn't been reacting to the jab. He's been allowing it to hit him, but he hasn't been getting out of position to get hit by the right hand, and he's been ready for it. And he gets walked into this left hook instead because because the the great trap setting and the experience that even though Lipinets only has ten fights or twelve fights at this point, uh, he's still very experienced in combat sports. Anyway, moving on, great trap from him, and now he starts moving forward and throws his first right hand. Boom, gets blocked, kind of faints him right here. Boom, dips down to his right, makes him think a right hand over the top is coming. And kind of walks him into this left hook. Can't really tell if it lands, but that's not the point. But really great trap right there from Lipinets. Big fan of that. Fainting again. And look at, even after all that work, right? Still fainting. And again, now this is the first like real concrete evidence that we have that he's been waiting for the right hand, right? The jab comes just like it has in every other situation. And then the right hand goes right over the top, right? Really interesting. Now, as, as the round kind of plays out, we're going to go into round two. Um, I want to talk about some other things that Lipinets has not been doing, right? And that's controlling his opponent after he throws a right hand, right? Or after he throws a jab, you know? Um, so he's, he doesn't control the distance again, right? His opponent telegraphs that shot. I think he still lands the jab. I'm not exactly sure. Maybe it catches some part on the glove, and he kind of lands his on the shoulder. But when he when he comes out after throwing that shot, he just comes straight back, right? Very boxer, like boxer puncher style, you know, in and out, shooting back and forth with his feet. You know, good good footwork. But um, but not controlling his opponent, right? Defensively, relying on defense of slipping and rolling punches, which I'm not a big fan of. Um, decent job, you know, like very low level but like a decent job of setting his shots up and setting a great trap, you know? So far, uh, he's done some really great things, but there are a lot of things that he's not doing super well. Um, so, so far, you know, the best that you can give him on my grading scale, um, which I'm going to amend, you know? I had a, a very smart comment from somebody, um, and instead of using my grading scale the way that I've been using, I've used to be saying it, I'm gonna say like fighters, like Lomachenko, I'm gonna give them five stars, you know? He's a five-star fighter, you know. Maybe that still sucks dick. I don't know. Because people will still think about it like, you know, A, B, and C. But um, I'm going to go five stars for fighters who have 
you know, both offensive and defensive responsibility, right? Fainting and probing and then controlling their opponents after they punch or after their opponents punch, right? Controlling them after their opponents punch. Um, fighters who do one or the other, uh, they get four stars. And then fighters like, like Sergey Lipin yet so far who have decent, um, decent feints, right? He's got some good feints, setting traps, right? Um, but doesn't control his opponent, doesn't... Um, he's got very ABC-style defense, right? If you throw a punch, he can slip that punch, right? Like, I'll say common sense boxing, right? Oh, someone throws a jab at you, you catch the jab. Someone throws a jab at you, you slip it. Someone throws a jab at you, you counter it. Someone throws a right hand. You know, common sense. You know, anybody who's had so many fights is going to be able to do that. These are like basic skills, in my opinion. Uh, they get three stars, you know, so so far, Lipinets is kind of on that three star that three star path. Even though I'm a big fan of his so far, and only twelve fights, right? So, the round starts off. Uh, Zappa giving him that same, you know, kind of tired um, uh, telegraph, and then walks into a jab, but immediately following it up with another jab. Uh, because of the fact that he knows Lipinets is not looking to land the right hand, right? He's not going over the top with the right hand. Lipinets is very smart and very patient uh, in setting his traps, um, but not looking to get himself out of position um, and uh, for the right hands that his op he knows his opponent is ready for, uh, and Zappa taking advantage of that. Now, I like this defensive responsibility, right? Zappa shoots a jab at him, right? And I think Zappa's expecting a counter now, right? So, he, whoops. So you can see the the very telegraphed shot from him, right? So he faints. He kind of jostles his hand first, right? Takes that step, shoots the jab, but instead of taking the bait and shooting his jab because he knows his opponent is ready for it now, right? He just ducks the right hand, kind of expecting that Zappa has made an an made an adjustment and is looking to land the right hand now. Oh, interesting. But then in this in this instance, he does kind of fall for the bait after seeing that Zappa's not looking to throw the right hand, right? But Zappa's not really able to make anything out of it, right? He rolls the jab, which you don't really want to do. You just want to slip it. Uh, and by the time he comes up, he's no longer he no longer has uh, Lipinets out of position. Lipinets has already taken a step back before even the first punch comes, and he's not able to make any offense out of it, in spite of the fact that he was able to read that and bait Lipinets into throwing that shot. And again, look at how easy it is for him to get him out of position. Probe, probe, right? Probing, jab, and then comes in with the power shots. And now Lipinets looking to follow up and land his own counters, which is interesting. But why is Zappa able to get him out of position this easily in the first place? You know, that's going to be something he needs to work on. Wide hook, barely missing. And good responsibility, or good defensive responsibility, slipping that jab, or slipping that right hand, right? But this left hook, right? He's not really controlling the distance, right? So Zappa can kind of do whatever he wants, you know? He's not really making him work around the jab or work around the lead hand. Um, and, you know, that was a really close shot, you know? And it could have gone either way, you know? So that's something that I would definitely like to see uh, Lipinets work on is controlling his opponent, you know? And I don't think that that's something that he's he's going to be able to work on at all, to be honest. Um I don't know if, if any of you guys know, again, real quick. Telegraphing the jab, but following it up because he knows Lipinets is not looking to counter, right, except for with the jab, and is able to feint him. Whoops. Boom. Feints him with the right hand. Look at how he brings the right hand up and gets him to think it's going to be a right hand. Walks him into a left hook right there, which I'm not sure lands. It doesn't matter. Left hook to the body, which does land. And then kind of clobbers him with the other shot. Um, but it's really easy for him to get Lipinets out of position. And I don't like that so far. Um, but uh, one thing I want to talk about is Buddy McGirt is um, Sergey Lipinets' coach right now. And the last time I saw Buddy McGirt, I think... <laughs> I think he was cornering um, 
Arturo Gatti against Floyd Mayweather. You know? Come on, man. <sighs> anyway, I don't think that Buddy McGirt is, like, the greatest trainer. I think he knows how to hold mitts really well. And a lot of fighters think that that means that you're going to be a good fighter because your opponent can hold mitts and punch and hold, you know, and do that kind of fancy stuff for you and it's going to help you. But I think that, Lip that Lipinets needs a better coach. You know, no offense to Buddy McGirt. You're a better coach than I am. I don't know, man. I don't know how to train a fighter. I don't know. Maybe I do, and I just don't know it. But, um, but anyway, um, moving on with the film study and not bashing Buddy McGirt. <laughs> oh, interesting. So, faints him upstairs. And then looks to go to the body, and Zappa walks him into a right hand. Really interesting, right? So, I have to go back now to the last time that Lipinets threw a jab. Had to have been maybe farther back. Not just any jab, but he was leading with the jab. Okay, so here... I'm not exactly sure if that's a feint. That's a feint. And now I think Zappa is waiting for a jab, right? And ducking down. Interesting. Because I don't think that there was any any other times where... Okay, so he leads with a jab here, right? But Zappa doesn't show any signs of, of coming over the top of a jab to the body with his right hand. Again, not showing it again, following him back, the same thing he was doing before. But this is just like beautiful right here that what Zappa sets him up for. And I, I'm not even sure, to be honest, if Zappa knew that that was going to be uh, a second punch or if he just immediately thought that, um, that Lipinets was going to go to the body and this was his counter for it. You know, but great job from Zappa walking him into that shot and timing him. And again, it's interesting because he didn't faint that time, you know. And if you think about it, like, why was, why did he choose this time of all times not to faint and to walk into a counter? Especially since all the other times he has fainted, but, um... But Zappa hasn't shown any propensity to actually counter. You know, really interesting. And, you know, you might say unlucky. You know, kind of unlucky of Lipinets to use that time as the only time that he doesn't faint. Oh, okay. Now Zappa is showing a propensity to actually counter uh, Lipinets' jab. And I wonder if... Um, and I'm trying to look for it right now. Is there a tell that Lipinets has that allows him to see that that, that jab is coming because that is a pretty that's a pretty sharp counter oh no 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 okay so what I'm missing here sorry I haven't watched this round before you guys so we're kind of doing all of this live usually I'll give it like I'll give the round like a one or two uh, watches and then I'll kind of break them down but um, he feints him with that with that lead hand and gets uh, Lipinets to uh, counter the jab uh, with his own timing because he knows that he's getting time off of his tell. Uh, and that's the reason why he's shooting that jab over the top. Really interesting. I wonder why he waited so long to do that. Oh, man. Now, this is something that I really like about Lipinets. Um, it doesn't work out for him right here, but he shoots that jab, right? And then he throws the right hand, and then he gets into high guard, Right, and it's kind of like a catch and shoot, uh, a catch and counter style, right? But he doesn't. In this instance, he doesn't actually wait for Zappa's uh, counter to come first, right? So he gets himself out of position, boom, and then shells up. But he doesn't wait for Zappa to throw his shot before he throws his next punch, which is really interesting because later on in the fight you will see him do that. I think. I know I've seen it in other fights of of um, Lipinets. I'm not sure if he does it in this fight. Okay, now Lipinets starting to 
throw his right hand now. Really interesting. So he feints him and then throws a right hand to the body. And, you know, not the greatest feint, right? It works, right? But he doesn't know what his opponent's going to do. What if Zappa would have thrown another right hand right there over the top of that, that hook? Oh, okay. So now he shoots that jab. And instead of allowing Zappa to chase him and throw counters, he looks to smother him and control him. Interesting. All right, no more wrestling, guys. Fainting him. Ooh, and I like that. On the ropes, right? Instead of allowing, allowing his opponent to set his shots up, he's stepping with his jab. Whoa. But it doesn't really work out in the way that he wants. Zappa is still able to kind of come through and uh, not fall for the shot. Maybe he thought there was a right hand going to come right there. But whoop. Ducks under it. Controls him. And then... Um, sorry, guys. I'm losing focus right now. Maybe this is too long. <laughs> but... Um, but Lupinet's doing a good job of getting off of the ropes after the the initial, you know, getting him out of position. You know, but again, you know, Lupinet's not showing not showing the ability to to control the distance, right? Zappa is kind of able to kind of muscle himself in, you know, kind of walk in whenever he wants to, um, and uh, set his punches up. You know, not really having to. To worry about that area, the distance between them being contested by Lipinets. And again, Zappa trying to counter him with that overhand right over the jab. And I, I think that this is again him baiting him. Yeah, he's baiting him and he slips to the outside and then shoots the right hand. So Zappa's showing some pretty good skills, man. To be honest, this guy looks pretty solid from what I've seen. Um, he knows he's getting timed, and he's, he's set up a number of traps off of that timing. Um, only one has paid dividends, right? But that's not really the point. It's the fact that he understands what's going on. Responsible defense. Ducks from around the right hand. I think this fight ends in KO for Lipinets, by the way. So it'll be interesting to see how he gets there, because I do want to finish this fight. And good on um, good on Zappa for going to the body rather than going to the head with that right hand. Um, even though I'm not sure it lands, you know, maybe it's like, you know, mostly on the arm, but... Man. And now this is interesting because he shoots that shot. He knows that Lipinets is going to move away from the right hand. And he's not able to kind of walk him into this left hook, right? I'm not sure, like you know, why it's so difficult for him to walk him into it or to time it. Shoots the one, two. And I love this from Lipinets, right? Rolls the shot. And it kind of looks like it clips him, actually. But he knows that it's going to be coming. And he kind of waits for it, too. Oh, man. Walks him right into that shot. And now it's interesting because I'm not sure why Lipinets is, is giving up on his fainting, right? Because it was so successful for him in the first round, and he's given it up this round, and he's gotten hit with two right hands. And I granted one of those right hands was off of a baited shot. I wish I could see better what was going on with there, but I'm not going to even... Ooh... Great right hand right there. So telegraphing the shot. And then walking him into a right hand. Um, and it's interesting because in some of the previous exchanges right here, um, after shooting that, that jab, um, Zappa will try to follow him or press forward with his jab as we saw when he would get Lipinets on the ropes. Um, and that would kind of allow him to, you know, faint or probe his way into getting Lipinets out of position. And it looks like in this instance that 
uh, Lipinets is kind of able to take advantage of that that tendency. What, but it's interesting too because why isn't Zappa aware that this jab is going to come and automatically setting him up for a right hand over the top, right? Like this would have been a beautiful opportunity to walk him into a right hand as he would be moving into that right hand right there instead of landing his own. You know, I'm not sure what's changed. Uh, it, doesn't, it didn't look like so far anything else has changed. Um, but a good... Oh, uh, there you go. So right there, um, Zappa saying, okay, well, if you're going to start throwing the 1-2, I'll throw the 1-2 myself and try to walk you into my own right hand. There you go, Lipinets. Faint him. Faint him. Make him give up on his counters. So faint. Jab to the body. Take a step back. And look at how he follows him, dude. I love that. You know, that's really interesting. So boom, boom. And then immediately, Zappa follows him back because he knows that he's going to move out of range with the, of the right hand and tries to land a left hook. You know, really interesting stuff from Zappa. You know, I, I kind of kind of makes me wish I would I I could watch more tape of him as well. But oh man, now this is beautiful too because because of the fact that Lipinets didn't throw very many right hands in the first round, he's starting to let go of that right hand because he's got he's got um. He's got Zappa chasing him, right? And I guess maybe that's the part that I was missing a second ago is Lipinets is picking up on that pattern as well. But it's interesting because there's also that pattern of of uh, Lipinets timing him, timing him when he punches and countering over his jab, right? Or countering him with his own jab that, um, that Zappa has already picked up on. So now they would kind of be competing for like the same opportunity to or the same timing or opportunity for punching, right? Um, and it's interesting that Zappa is so, I don't want to say so rarely, right? But he's kind of given up on that timing. Because if you throw a right hand right here, again, he might have been able to walk um, Lipinets right into it. Ooh. Boom. Rolls the right hand. Turns away from the left hook comes back with his own left hook. Beautiful boxing right there. Great flow right there. Great responsible defense from Lipinets. And again, though, this is why probing would, would be so effective against him is because he knows all the right moves, right? So, whoops, let's go back. The right hand comes, turns away from the left hook, even though the left hook doesn't really come. And then walks him right into that, that left hook right there. You know, really interesting stuff, you know. But if uh, he had thrown a right hand and then a probing left hook right there and then another right hand, like Golovkin sometimes does, uh, he'll throw a double right hand. He could have walked the Lipinets into that. And that's all due to the fact that um, Lipinets, you know, he knows the right moves. He knows the right motions. He knows what to do. And he, I guess he kind of expects your, his opponents to be honest with him, right? Right hand, left hook, right hand, right? And um, uh, that's one of the things that I really love about Golovkin so much is like he'll throw a right hand and he'll throw a probing left hook and then maybe another left hook, right? To get you off your rhythm, off of your, your own timings and stuff. But so far, you know, <coughs> one good trap from Lipinets, some decent fainting... <coughs> But um, a lot of flaws in terms of, you know, setting his punches up. You know, I know he's kind of picked up on some patterns of, of um, Zappa to kind of chase him after his, uh, after his jabs. So he can kind of start setting up his right hand. Um, but he's, if we go down the checklist of things that he, you're supposed to do, you're always supposed to be controlling the distance or fighting your opponent for control of the distance between you guys. Um, if you have control of the distance between you and your opponent, you're going to be able to set your punches up and you're going to be able to stop your opponent from being able to set their punches up and make them be honest with you, 
right? You're not, they're not going to be able to trick you into, into thinking, oh, I'm going to feint a jab and then throw a right hand or fake a left hook, throw a right hand or fake a jab and throw a left hook. They're not going to be able to do that kind of stuff because they don't have control of the space um, in order to do it. Because in theory, you're countering them and punching them in the face while they're looking to set their shots up, right? Um, or making them think at the very least. Also, he's not controlling his opponents, right? After he throws a punch, like just looking in this exchange, right? Just looking in this exchange, boom, right hand. And then he doesn't control his opponent, boom, and get him in a headlock or control him with his forearm. He immediately lets go, and now look at this right hand that's coming. Even though he rolls it, it kind of grazes him on the head. What if it was at a, just a different, a little bit different of an angle, right? And it caught him and knocked him out, right? Responsible defense here, but then after he throws this left hook, he doesn't control him, right? He takes a step back and gets away from his, his opponent's other left hook, which is good, right? But he's not controlling him. He's not pushing him off balance. He's not grappling him right and i don't want to say grapple like wrestle right but clinching he's not you know there are a lot of things that he's not doing that are going to make some of that stuff against higher level fighters like um like terence crawford for example if he didn't vacate the the division it's going to make a lot of that stuff more difficult to do and to get away with um in spite of the fact that this for all intents and purposes is a very successful engagement for him and it looks it makes him look like a great fighter you know it's a very it's very well done on his part, uh, as long as his opponent is being honest with him. Um, um, so let's, yeah, and probing, right? Probing is the biggest part of um, controlling the space between you and your opponent, right? It's probably the most, the most obvious part, right? As you saw earlier, the feints and stuff, when Zappa would try to set his punches up, he could feint him and get him to not occupy that space and get him to not set his punches up but for the most part Zappa could kind of do whatever he wanted and he was able to kind of walk um, Lipinets into a couple of shots as well um, anyway I do hope to do a couple more rounds of this guy um, I, I do like watching him and his style um, and I think it gets a lot better I think he, he winds up showing us some like pretty sweet skills um, as far as like setting his punches up and getting his opponents out of position. Uh, we saw only like a very small taste of it when he throws that right hand and then he shells up. Um, and that's kind of part of his, his, um, his ability to get his opponents out of position is by making it look like he's out of position. Um, and he uses that kind of high guard slipping and rolling and catching shots uh, and then punches in between. But it'll be really interesting. We'll see. Anyway, thanks guys.